Dames en heren, goedemiddag. Hartelijk dank voor jullie geduld. En nou, jullie hebben wel moeten wachten, maar ik, had, uh, ik ben blij dat jullie je medewerking wilden verlenen. We, als iedereen ready is, uh, starten we dan gelijk met deze persbriefing. Ik, uh, okay, we kunnen starten. Ik ben Kailash Bississer. Uh, corporate Communication Advisor bij Staatsolie. Welkom. Uh, de aanleiding voor deze briefing is het bezoek van de heer Patrick Pouyanné, bestuursvoorzitter en chief executive officer van Total Energies aan Suriname. De introducties zijn in het Engels, maar bij de vragenronde kunt u uw vraag ook in het Nederlands stellen. Met name als het voor meneer uh, Jagister is bestemd. Ik zal verder gaan in het Engels. Mr. Patrick Pouyanné, Chairman and Chief Executive Officer of Total Energies, visited Suriname today to inform President Chandrika Prasad Santoki and Staats Oli about the further steps in Block 58 offshore Suriname. I would like to welcome the Total Energies delegation uh, to Suriname alongside with Mr. Puyane and also the Staats only board members present in the room and the French ambassador Mr. Lacoste. Welcome and a warm welcome to all our friends from the press. Well, we have a very tight schedule, so uh, in a few mo moments, Mr. Jagesser and Mr. Puyane will share more information with you. Their introductions will be followed by a Q&A. Due to time constraints, we will only be able to address a few questions. Please, one question per media company, and we would like to be direct in your questioning. Welcome, Minister Abiyamofo. Also, there is no opportunity for one-on-one -on -one interviews. However, Mr. Jagezer will make himself available the coming days for media interviews. I trust we can count on your understanding and uh, thank you for your cooperation. On the stage we have, if you not know them by now, Mr. Anand Jagezer and Mr. Patrick Boyer. May I have your attention for Mr. Jagesser? Oh, he just wants to miss, let Mr. Puyani speak first. Please, Mr. Puyani. Okay. Okay, uh, good afternoon. Uh, I'm happy to be, very happy to be in Paramaribo. Uh, as we uh, announced to uh, His Excellency the President uh, Santoki, uh, I came here today because after a, a long campaign of exploration of appraisal, where, during which we drilled since 2019 uh, 15 wells, we have um, identified uh, two large oil discoveries on the eastern part of the block 258, called uh, Sakapara South and called Krak Badu, which contains globally next to 700 million barrels of oil, and which will allow us to make a, a very large development project, exploitation projects of 200,000 barrels per day. So today we are launching the development studies. The next step will be, uh, we intend to go to detailed engineering studies before year end, and to come back here by before the end of 24, to sanction the project. The production of this field should come by 28. So it's, I think, a very important event. It's the first large oil development in offshore Suriname. But uh, Anna will be better positioned than me on my side. This project uh, 
will be, uh, in fact, uh, consist, uh, it's a project which will, budget is evaluated around $9 billion. So $9 billion, $700 million barrel of oil, it makes more or less uh, $12, $13 per barrel of the costs. It will consist, it will be developed offshore, fully offshore, 150 kilometers from shore. There will be a big floating production unit, a big boat, in fact, vessel, which will be uh, built and uh, implemented uh, offshore. And then all the wells, 30 wells more or less, will be uh, drilled and connected to this uh, production unit. The oil will be exported from offshore. Uh, Total Energies has a huge experience in this type of development. Uh, in Angola, Nigeria, Brazil, we have uh, a number of what we call FPSOs that we operate. And so we intend, to, of course, to use all our competencies to do the best for the Suriname. I would add as well that, of course, uh, sustainable development is important. So this project will uh, put on board all the best available technologies in order to minimize all the greenhouse gas emissions. In particular, there will be zero flaring, no flaring on this vessel, and all the gas, associated gas, which will be produced will be re-injected uh, as pressure maintenance in the reservoir. I would also add that, of course, uh, today is a big day, I understand, because we announced that project, but uh, we have a long way before we can produce the next 15 months until end of 24 to work hard to finalize these engineering studies to make the tenders to find the contractors to build the projects that's the work of the next 15 years day uh, months and then we'll have four months four years sorry to build the project from n24 to uh, to 28. Uh, of course for us what is very will be very important is to develop the local content of the project uh, in the last two years, since we are operator during this exploration appraisal phase, we have managed to repatriate to uh, Suriname the logistic base for all the uh, operation. We created 80 jobs. We uh, gave $90 million of activities to the economy. And of course, with the projects that we will develop, more will come. And there is a strong will. And of course, I've been very encouraged, to be clear, by the President of the Republic to put a lot of emphasis on the local content, including uh, putting in place the training sessions and to, uh, in order to get more people from Suriname involved and getting benefits from uh, this project. So I think it's, uh, of course for us, it's an important news uh, because we have invested a lot in exploring, in appraising during the last three years. And today I'm very happy and uh, to be able to announce that uh, we are embarking very uh, seriously and uh, to be, develop this very large project for the benefit of Suriname and of course Total Energies and our partner Apache. But just for the introduction, I think uh, I will answer to your question. Please, thank you, Mr. Puyane, Mr. Jagesser. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Master of Ceremony. Thank you, Patrick, for the concrete uh, introduction. Uh, as mentioned, summarized, we're talking about 200,000 barrels a day. The first development in uh, Guyana, for instance, was 120. We're not competing, but just to give you a flavor of the size, 700 million barrels of uh, resource and a project of 9 billion uh, barrels, uh, 9 billion US dollars. <clears throat> So we are very happy to have uh, Patrick and his team here in Suriname. Uh, our experience with Total Energies is that uh, they're very committed. When we visited their offices in uh, September 22, we asked them if Total Energy has any interest in delaying the project. And he said, how would we be delaying the project if we spent to date 1.3 billion US dollars in the project? So they have no interest in, um, he committed to three appraisal wells that we have drilled, we have flow tested them. And we are sitting here today because they, uh, they came about all their commitments. 
and we have discovered now the 700 million uh, barrels of oil. We have the 700 million barrels of oil to have a feasible project. Uh, another commitment was that he would be here if we would have a project, so he is here, which is uh, a testimony to uh, the fact that we have uh, a project that will really happen. So for Suriname, we have turned to a historic page today. I think uh, the Lifa here, uh, the higher power has blessed Suriname with a lot of minerals uh, the past 100 years. We had bauxite, we have gold, we had had oil, and now this is the biggest material price today. And of course, we will have to be careful uh, to handle this wealth uh, and not to spend the money before we earn it and not to overspend uh, to uh, guarantee long-term continuity because there are infamous uh, examples in the world of countries that have a lot of oil and still a poor economy and we don't have to go too far to the west to uh, find one of the, the economies which is Venezuela. Um, as stated uh, in the production sharing co contract, Suriname will earn the most of the net income from this project. And according to calculations of Stasoli, that will be like seven to nine times the, the G GDP of Suriname. So, 7 tot 9 maal het bruto nationaal product van Suriname uh, over de productieperiode. En dat is enorm veel. Dat hele, alles wat we verdienen, toegevoegde waarde van Suriname, 9 maal dat zullen we in de periode terug verdienen. Um, so, this is usually uh, important for uh, our country. Of course, then the important question and we can make it even a little bit more pointy. Will we see the day that this will happen? Because I know it's very difficult in Suriname. And every time we have to say, we, ha we have to wait, uh, this is then the important moment that we say that we have enough research and we have a feasible project. But of course, like Patrick has explained, a project of $9 billion is not like you going to a shop and buy a ship. It is engineered, it is designed, it's built, it takes time. So why is it important that this is happening right now? We expect that from this announcement there will be increased economic activities in Suriname. People will come here to conduct business, to have pre-meetings on, um, on, uh, on uh, activities that they would like to establish in Suriname. And one important thing is you, have, you know we have the IMF program, they have a macroeconomic framework in which they don't include the oil revenues of the future. If they include that, it will lighten the, the framework so the Surinamese government will be able to do more for the Surinamese people, which is very important. It is for Staatsoli, Staatsoli, the, the, the board of Staatsoli, the people that worked at Sazoli is very important. This company was set up to show the world that we as a Surinamese company, we can conduct highly complicated business, but to the benefit of the Surinamese people, which is very important. Uh, the past five wells total drilled from Suriname. It was from a port in Suriname. And with that drilling of those five wells, they spent 90 million US dollars in Suriname. So in this development project, they will drill approximately 30 wells. If you calculate it, if you calculate that, then it adds up to half a billion US dollars that could be spent in Suriname. And of course, Patrick has ensured us as well that uh, they will also commit further to local con uh, content development, so it will even be better. A lot of people are asking me when to build their hotel. I think this is the time. When to build the restaurants. We have seen this in Guyana happening, that people flock into the country uh, to, uh, to conduct business. I can tell you Stasoul is extremely motivated to continue. 
our young geologi geologists, geoscientists, are working day and night to develop the offshore uh, to bring even more uh, prosperity to Suriname in the future. But we have to handle it well. And I thank you. I'll keep it short so we can have a lot of questions from you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jagesar. And as per schedule, we only have like 10 minutes for questions. So I know there are a lot of questions. And I hope we have more time. So I, uh, yes. 20 minutes. 20 minutes. Thank you very much. So we have 20 minutes. I Please keep it short, your question, and to whom is directed, and from which media company you are. I see that Mr. Sukul is already standing, so go ahead, sir. Um, I'm Kenneth Sukul, freelance journalist. I welcome Total in Sunam, and I hope that them arrival will bring us economic development. The question is for Mr. Patrick. 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 The UN COP countries want to reduce carbon emission and thus the demand for oil and gas. And that for 43%. That means that the uh, ask for oil and gas will reduce with 43%. What will that mean for your operation? Because you will produce oil after 28. And if the uh, Fian Cup countries will reduce the oil uh, before 2030, what will you do in two years? Thank you. It's a good question, but the answer is uh, clear for me. We invest in uh, oil projects if they have a low cost which means that we invest in Suriname because we will be able to produce this oil for less than $20 per barrel. When you look to the world today, we produce 100 million barrels of oil per day. I can tell you that there is a lot of oil which is produced for more than $20 per barrel. So this oil which we'll be able to produce in Suriname will be very competitive. So we can launch this project, we will produce that oil at $20 per barrel, and your question is for the people who are today producing at $50 per barrel. They produce for a more expensive price in Canada, for example, in Shell Oil in the US. So it's a question of competitiveness. So the commitment of total energies when we invest in your new projects is less than $20 per barrel, so that's the best protection. And second is uh, low emission, which means that we we'll intend to produce this oil with less than 15 kilograms per barrel of CO2 per barrel. It's very competitive. The average today on the planet is more 25, 30. So we go in the direction of COP28 and the climate change. But you know, at the end, customers are still requiring oil. So we'll have to adapt. But uh, again, the answer to your point is competitiveness of our project here in Suriname. And it will be competitive in Suriname because it's a large project, big project. So, of course, you have a lot of oil to produce, so it makes it more, more competitive. So this is the answer to your question. Thank you, Mr. Pirane. I see that uh, Sam Blankendal from ABC, and I also saw the finger of uh, Ivan Cairo. So we have Sam, Ivan, and then Lloyd, your finger? No, all right. Please go ahead. Yes. Good afternoon, Mr. Patrick, Mr. Anand. Uh, Mr. Patrick, uh, you're only talking about the oil production. Do you have more specific information about the gas development uh, during the years that are coming up? No, today we are, you know, we find that through on Block 58 some oil and some gas. Uh, we have decided to concentrate first on oil. Why? Simply because oil, I will tell you, it's, uh, it's easier to commercialize. You know, tankers will come to this uh, unit offshore and will go in the world. When you have gas, you need to find markets to commercialize the gas. Uh, by the way, the size of the gas we have discovered is not as big. So, 
uh, at this stage, and we discussed, of course, with uh, Anand and uh, the authorities, we think the right thing for the country is to concentrate on the oil development. There is some gas, not so much, not so big. Maybe in the future we'll need to cooperate with other countries about gas. But gas, historically, the problem is that you don't transport gas as easy than oil. You don't store it as easy, and it's more expensive. So the question will be to find a market. And so that's the point on, on gas. So at this stage, I think the good news is oil. So I know that it's, everybody wants to do everything today, but uh, my objective is to be able to deliver a strong, sustainable, respons environmentally responsible and cost-competitive project on the oil part. And then let's do that for the next year. Let's go to sanction. We'll open the other chapter for gas and see how we could monetize that. Thank you. Ivan Cairo, please. Good afternoon. The question is for both gentlemen. Um, some people claim that um, Total Energies is, is looking forward to break open the contract they have now with Suriname and start only um, to gain favorable uh, incentives and, and, and agreements and arrangements. Is that likely to happen, Mr. Jagisar, Mr. Puyani? Thank you. No. <laughs> Yeah. But if, if Anand wants, I'm, I'm open, huh? I can do it. Huh? Yeah, yeah I, just, I just don't want to put a, a stamp on Total, but they're, of course, uh, tough negotiators, but so are we. Uh, but one thing we respect very much from Total, they always keep to the contract. The discussion is always to the language of the contract. They have never asked us to change anything in the contract, but just to keep to the contract. And we are asking the same. So I think it's a professional uh, business environment, and we should keep it that way. Very good. No, I, I think we have, no, we have a value which is respect for each other. Respect means respecting the contract. So when we engage, we sign the contract. And honestly, uh, it's, uh, it's part of it. If, if I'm here today, it's because we consider that with the contract we have, we can develop this project or project yes. in a commercially profitable way for both parties. If costs are rocketing to the sky, we'll revisit, but it's not the case. So no, it's not my way to work for us. Uh, by the way, you know, we like, uh, what I've asked to the authorities is the country, let's stick to the contract, both of us. That's, that's a commitment, it's a matter of trust, and the contract is a relation, shapes a relationship to trust. By the way, you know, we, we trust Serena. We have since we have Block 58, we have taken three of our exploration license. Block 6, Block 8, and soon I hope Block 64. So that means that uh, Total is comfortable with the framework. It's not an easy contract, and I can tell you that uh, our, you know, our friends are taking, taking care of interest of Serena, which is normal. Uh, that's normal, but at the end, this type of project, they require fundamentally trust and partnership more than fights and negotiation. Thank you. One more question. Uh, Gloria Batze. Good afternoon. My name is Gloria. Welcome in Suriname. I want to ask you two questions. Thank you so much. One question, <laughs> one, please, okay, Gloria. One. Yeah. Uh, one long and one quick and super quick. Okay, thank you so much. I was asking, you were talking about a big project that we built in offshore. How do you think of, which is a plan about including the locals? Because we don't have that many um, technical people in Suriname. How do you plan, of course, with starts only to fill the gap? Thank you. I think, you know, experience, we have developed projects like this one. I was discussing with uh, Angola, or, or new managing director, you can stand up uh, Arthur in the country, which I bring with me. He's coming as a long experience of deep offshore projects from Angola. So you can ask him a lot of questions. And I can tell you it was the same in many countries where we developed. Uh, and we have, in fact, developed also some competencies in training people. Just uh, if people are motivated, you know, with, uh, of course, it takes time, but we, have, we will establish some training uh, camp. You know, we managed to do it in logistics. We'll do it for more technical part. And fundamentally, you don't expect to see only French expatriates in uh, Maravaribo, you know. Some will come, but it's not like that that we work. We work. And of course, we have to, 
to establish with the help of Stasoli and to identify the motivated people. If people are motivated, they can learn. And we will bring the, I would say, the, the masters or the teachers which we have in the company, some people who are able in different countries to uh, explain, to teach, to train, and in order to get some operators. But I, I'm sure that uh, when this uh, big unit of show will run, most of the staff will come from Suriname maybe on a rotation basis, but this is a business in Angola. I have invited your president and Anna to visit our installation. I can tell you, you have few expatriates and most 95% of the staff on the FPSO is from Angola. So I think it's a new era and it's a huge opportunity, I think, for the people of Suriname. Of course, we know that it's not a large population, but again, if young people are willing, uh, it will be good, and by the way, as you know, generally, in oil and gas company, the salary is not too bad. Yeah, so maybe to add to that, uh, Mrs. Botsa, so we, of course, we're doing the NATIN together also with uh, Total. Uh, so most of the people that work will work on the production platform will come from the NATIN. I must warn, in the production phase, the oil business is not not uh, labor intensive, it's capital intensive. So not a lot of people, but especially the spin-off, like the restaurants, hotels, legal, administrative services, they will take off and we have to take care of that. Uh, in the development phase, we're looking, so they have a relay piping that they do. We would like to do, we would love to do that from Suriname, because our refinery we built for uh, one billion US dollars. We had a, a lot of welders from Suriname, and they can do excellent work. And the mentality to work in the oil sector is different. So if I call you, Mrs. Batsa, Friday morning, no, Saturday morning, two o'clock in the morning, and you tell me, wait till Monday, you cannot work in the oil business, because the oil business is 24 seven. You have to jump out of your bed, go to the machine shop, and conduct the work so the machine can go back to the offshore. Thank you. Next question, please. Yes, good afternoon, Ryan LaRose. Um, I have a question about the production. How long will it take? Because you will invest nine billion US dollars. Um, and how long will it take? And what can we get out, out of this year? Because the rest of the world is talking about going green. What can we expect about the working stage? The production will start by N28, and 80% uh, of the production will be produced in the next 12 years. So by 2040, most of the oil will be produced from these two fields. We might connect more satellite fields, which are there, but fundamentally. So the answer to you is uh, in deep offshore, you know, and uh, we have sized the vessel in order to maximize the revenues for the country. and. Uh, a 200,000 baht per, 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 per day, there will be a plateau, five years, and then there will be room, space to link other discoveries to this uh, vessel. So again, the answer to your concern is that uh, don't worry, this oil will be produced and will not be banned. And the revenues will come soon enough. Thank you. Next question, please. Um, Fishmani Thomas from Suriname Herald. Um, you're speaking about uh, oil production. When can we exact expect the first barrel of oil to be produced? And any indication if there's uh, going to be more oil or if, uh, with the drillings? Do you expect to find more oil? As I said, first oil and 28. That's the target. Maybe Anand asked me mid 28. I say 28. Uh, no, but N28. So that's the first production, okay? Uh, if we, I will, I will tell you, one year I will come back to sanction the project, then I will give you the perfect calendar, because then all the construction contracts will be awarded. But let's say, normally, project like that, it's 48 months, a little less, 44, 48 months. So, then, is there more oil? As I just said, at the size of the fields, we don't think, but there are some, we have drilled some positive work with smaller size. So these over oil discoveries might be in the future connected to this production unit. Okay. 
Thank you. Next question. Vanessa Emanuelson, Update Radio and TV. I have a question for the Total Energy CEO and one for Mr. Jagesar. You already answered my first question by saying that uh, you're not going to do anything about the gas development. Saying that you're going to be busy with the oil deal for, let's say, 24 years, when will the possibility be there for Suriname to, through Total, do something about the gas development? And for Vinay um, Jagesar, Oh, one, more question. one other part of the question is, um, information has reached us that Total Energies will not use the gas, but uh, will use the pressure to get the oil up, but uh, push the gas back as far as possible into the, the, <laughs> the ground. I don't know the correct technical term, but you know exactly what I mean. And for Mayor Jagesar, uh, it is reason bekend that staats olie uit deze deel, met deze deel, geen gas winning, dat dat geen onderdeel is van deze deel. Um, en dat staat ze niet de faciliteiten en nog het kapitaal heeft daartoe. Um, als Total Energies daar niets mee gaat doen, is de mogelijkheid wel open voor andere companies om daar iets mee te doen. Zoals, ik dacht dat het Firebird was, die daar reeds onderhandelingen over aan het voeren was. Want die hebben bijvoorbeeld in Qatar zodanig weten te onderhandelen dat dat land er 70% voordeel uit heeft kunnen halen. En ook een topdeal heeft kunnen sluiten in Noorwegen. In hoeverre is de mogelijkheid er wel en komt dat niet in gedrang met de oliedeal? So on the gas, just to explain you. When we produce oil, we have what we call associated gas. So a well will produce oil and gas. So mainly oil, but some gas. What do we do with this gas? Traditionally, we flare it. We don't want to flare anymore. Because flare means greenhouse gas emissions. So instead of flaring, we will re-inject the gas in periphery of the reservoir. Why? Because in an oil field, when you produce the oil, the pressure diminish. When there is less pressure, you produce less. If you inject the gas on the periphery of the field, you make like you put some pressure, and then the production will be sustained for a longer stage. That's I make it's a lesson of oil engineer, but it's fundamentally how it works. So the full idea is that stop flaring and re-inject the gas in the periphery to contribute to the oil production. This gas, why can we not today monetize it? Because we are 150 kilometers from shore. And onshore in Suriname, the market for gas is quite limited. You know, uh, you have uh, some diesel generator, but uh, if we were willing to replace, and we fought to that with Anand, of course we study that to replace the oil the diesel generator by gas, it's too small. And so the cost of the pipeline between offshore and the shore to bring much, much amount, small amount of gas is, is not possible. So it does not mean that we have other gas fields, which are really gas fields. Uh, the first discoveries which were done in Suriname, Maca and Quasquasi, if I remember correctly, the two first discoveries was gas. So we need to think what can we do with this gas? And it's maybe to export, but all that is another story and a different project uh, where the competition, because you compete then, what we call LNG, with the US LNG, and so you have to take care of the competitiveness of such a project. That's the point where we are today. So the story is not finished in Suriname, but let's begin the story with oil, because this will be able to deliver in the most efficient way as soon as possible. Yeah, Mevrouw Emanuels, we gaan dus weer, and we we'll have to do it in English. No, no, but do it in English. Yeah, but, but you have to understand what she asked. She asked if we can give the gas away. So I have to answer a little bit in uh, English. We have contractual arrangements with Total. And in my individual interviews with all of you, the option for that, I will go deeper into that issue. Because there are contractual obligations regarding gas. It's not like it is announced in the press, like the gas is, we can take the gas off uh, the contractor party. No, there are contractual obligations. Um, in our opinion, there is not enough gas, gas, but we are looking, we are pushing total, of course, as well. But we have to be reasonable and, you know, we, 
We see an opportunity to work together with Guyana. Easier said than done, because the, we have different uh, legislation and uh, contractual terms. We have different interests. Guyana is a big boy now. Maybe they want to lead. So it's, it's always difficult to develop. I think what I ask is that we see and respect the journalists, are a they are professional. They know what to do. Stasoli is a professional company. We know what to do, and you can always ask us to explain anything to you. And I heard a claim of uh, Qatar. I think you are a journalist. Maybe you should check the claim. So, I mean, Qatar is not a small company, and I don't see two people setting up the whole gas industry of a country. So, but I will go into detail into the ga gas uh, uh, study, but Stats uh, is very interested to look at the gas and uh, Patrick has promised that we'll sit together with uh, the technical teams uh, to come to a development concept in the future. But of course, no, the most important thing also for Shurnam is, uh, is the oil. Thank you, Mr. Jagesar. I just want to say that we have room for one last question. And after that, I will ask Mr. Jagesar to make some closing remarks for the audience at home, uh, because it's being live streamed, so maybe he can explain it in Dutch what's been said here in just one minute. And then we'll start because the time is there. So Carla, please go ahead. Carla Boech is from LIM FM. Uh, so this is not the final investment. Uh, decision that everyone was waiting for and uh, there are some questions about the transparency of the production sharing contracts why aren't they being published uh, the policy of total energies if uh, we have no opposition to that but it's up to the state we have a contract with the state so we respect the sovereignty of the state and it's up to the state to decide uh, but again, if the state of Suriname is keen to publish, I have no objection to that. We are part of the uh, initiative for the transparency of the extractive industries and we are supportive of that approach, so no problem. FID again, why not FID? Because we just had the data. And between the data, positive data of the wells and the FID, we need to make the detailed engineering and we need to make tenders, international tenders. You don't award $9 billion contracts because I wake up yesterday and tell you I have an appointment with the president of Suriname. I want the FID. It's a little more. But again, we are doing, I can tell you, we are not slow. We have no conviction that this project is good. So we'll move forward. So if we can achieve between today and F24, the FID is quite an achievement. So just be patient. But we are on the way. It's just that, again, like you said, a $9 billion project is a huge project, and the devolve is a detail that we need to include to involve more and more people in order to make a nice and competitive project. Yeah, Mevrouw Boetjes. So we got the permission from, uh, from Total to publish the production sharing contract, uh, but there are more partners in the block. And of course, we have to consider if you're a big company like Total, anything that is published, it, when there is a discovery in Suriname, and I can tell this because I watch it, the share of Total will increase with 2%. But if it, there is a discovery in Suriname, the share of the partner will increase with 25%. So you can understand the impact of everything that's happening in the offshore on the partner, but also on us as a small company, uh, a country. So we have to balance, but we'll come back to this in detail. Thank you. Yes. Last question. Clayton Ewart for STVS. I came a little bit late in the meeting, just I want uh, to know if I heard good. Total, total energy will start until 2028 with the production. Has this have to do with the poor um, economic situation of our country? I see total energy will 
will start the production till 2028. Oh, no, Has no, no, this... No, 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 no,